Where is she? She's in the experience room. I thought I told you to let your hair grow longer. I like it this way. I'll tell you which way to like it. Sit down, Sid. I've got to get my rest. What's the big deal? I was worried about you. About your checkup at the clinic. I get back alive, I'll stay alive. I hope so. Close your eyes. Send your spirit to me. Let your body float through the colors of the air. Come on, I can do without the malarkey. So can I, Sid. What's that supposed to mean? It means that Sister Janice has seen the future and doesn't care for it. I'm not crazy about the present, either. Is that a fact? You get to live in a house like this? 500 bucks a pop from your devoted clients, your name in all the papers? A 50-50 split? Maybe you'd rather be back working in that factory. You'd like that better? I work here. Me, Sister Janice. I'm all you've got. You could leave out there. You're gonna do it without her. What do you do, Sid? I taught you, kiddo. I taught you every carny grift I knew. And all this class into the bargain. That's what I do. That's what you did. I don't need you anymore. Nothing hurts me. Don't you know that? I find myself another sister from the bottom of the sea. Who? Eve? Do you really think that little tramp can do what I do? She's learning. All right. What's your proposition? What do you want? Expenses come off the top. 25% is yours, the rest is mine. Try reading my mind. Got it? Now you know where we stand. Good night, Sid. I'm glad you're feeling better. It was like living beneath the sea. Well, not living, really. It was like swimming. Somewhere between life and death. The hospital room was all pale green light. Were you afraid? To die, Mrs. Columbo? Mm. You make sure that your readers understand that there's nothing to fear at all. Just the knowledge that death is what we were born for. That everything in the universe is, is part of everything else and that we each belong to one another. 
And time is a trick that we play on ourselves. I was blessed. God gave me back my life and the power to remember what I had learned at the bottom of the sea. And the power to tell my future. <laughs> Sometimes. To read my mind. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, for instance, right now you're thinking, oh, I'd love to see a demonstration of all this incredible stuff. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking. Well, how's that for mind reading? Let's see, it's 20 past 10. We have a couple of minutes, so let's try. We always give samples to the press. Even the neighborhood press? Oh, especially the neighborhood press. We're not interested in lurid journalism. Close your eyes. Try not to think. Let the music think for you. You're very strong-willed, Mrs. Columbo. Release your will. Release your spirit. Send it to me. Let your body float on the colored light. The light and the music. Photograph of a little girl. I'd say age seven or eight. Report card. Uh, name Ginny Colombo. Third grade. A in reading. C minus in arithmetic. Wallet photo. An old one. Young police officer. Recent photo. Same man, civilian clothes with Mrs. Colombo. Driver's license coming up. Numbers. Numbers. And a little girl. You mustn't worry about Jenny, Mrs. Colombo. Let your daughter go at her own pace. She'll do well in arithmetic soon enough. Don't speak. As a Libra, sometimes you expect too much from the ones you love. The ones you love. Your husband is involved in a dangerous profession, the police. I see danger now. Danger to someone close close to death, on the edge of death. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not you, it's someone close to me. Death. Oh, it's Sid, Sid Russell. Good morning, Sid. How are you today? I said good morning, and welcome to your last day on Earth. Does that alarm you, Sid? Oh, you mustn't be afraid of death. You'll see at the very end. You'll know that death is what you were born for. You've taught me so much, but I'm not your creature anymore. I don't belong to you anymore. We could have worked it out, but you wouldn't listen. And that's why I'm going to kill you. Now, you'll want to talk to me. And there's time to call me, Sid. Just enough time before we sink to the bottom of the sea and swim forever. Sister Janice's residence. What do I want? I want her now. I'm sorry, Sid. She's with a client. I don't give a damn who she's with. I can't interrupt. I'll tell her you called. 
May I have your attention, Sid? The lady I'm with is not a client. She's a reporter. And she wants to write about Sister Janice. She's going to write that I was with her in the experience room at the exact moment I predicted your death. That's all there is. Well, you can turn the television set off now. Unless you're too frightened to move. Are you frightened, Sid? the most incredible experience I've ever had in my whole life. Well, I hope I didn't frighten you. I sometimes frighten myself. There's a man, Sid Russell. He helps me with my financial affairs. Excuse me, I, I've got to call him. Hi, I'm Eve. Oh, I'm Kate Colombo. I know, you were expected. No answer. Eve is my friend. And I'm sure you're going to be my friend, too. Oh. Well, I don't think I'm ever going to forget this morning. <laughs> well, please, come back. Oh, I will. Thank you. Sid called. He sounded upset. Can I talk to you, Janice? Of course. I know you don't like me. You never have, ever since the day Sid brought me here. But I want to be your friend. I mean, really your friend. You don't have to be afraid of me. But sometimes I can read your thoughts. I mean, without any tricks. I can feel your thoughts in my own mind. I've always been able to do that. I know you hate Sid. Please don't hate me. Sydney Russell. Uh, now deceased. Excuse me, sir. I was at the police station. I was just picking up the robbery report for my paper. Oh, you're the part-time lady. I'm a part-time reporter. My mother likes to think I'm a full-time lady. I stand corrected. The desk sergeant said somebody in the building heard a gunshot. I don't care what anybody heard. The man died of heart failure. The man was on a heart medication. The man had scars from heart surgery. Heart failure. You want to talk gunshots? Talk to Sergeant Kaplan. He must have been watching something on the TV set. Whatever it was, it was one lousy show. Because he kicked in the picture tube, then dropped out of a heart attack. And the man next door heard a gunshot. Well, that's what he said. It was on the television. What about the other neighbor? Uh, the apartment's empty on that side. Excuse me. Unless you've got some kind of a deadline. Oh, no. My deadline isn't until next Tuesday. Next Tuesday? Yeah, right after the PTA meeting. Sergeant is set for Channel 4. Do you know what was playing on Channel 4? I'll tell you the truth, Mrs. Colombo. I'm not usually watching television 10.30 in the morning. It's stories with Mother Goose. Do you think there could have been a gunshot on stories with Mother Goose? I wouldn't know, ma'am. They're changing everything these days. I'll 
I'll be right there. You... Sergeant, was he wearing his shoes? Excuse me? His shoes. Uh, he was wearing pajamas. And no slippers? No slippers. Well, I wonder how he kicked in a television set with his bare feet. Maybe he threw something at it. Threw something? What? Where? There's nothing here. Maybe he put it back. Ben had a heart attack. Ma'am, talk to the medical examiner. I did. I'm sure. Policeman answered. I came right away. Mrs. Columba. I'm so sorry about your friend. You know Sister Janice? Yes, we met this morning. She had a premonition about Sid Russell's death. Yes, it was very strong. Is that where you found him? Uh, yes, ma'am, in the bedroom. He wore a pacemaker, you know, his heart. Uh, this premonition, when did she tell you about it? About 10.30. The same time Sid Russell died. You were together at 10.30, you and Sister Janice? Yeah. That's some premonition. My wife has them all the time. Hasn't been right yet. The sergeant said somebody heard a shot. The sergeant also says Mr. Russell broke the television set in a fit of rage, but he couldn't have been watching television. I mean, not Mother Goose, anyway. What are you looking for? I don't know. This, maybe. Isn't this one of those machines that plays, you know, television tapes? Yes, I think so. Well, maybe that's what he was watching. But it's empty. There's no cassette, no tape. <sighs> that leaves Mother Goose. Terrific. Mrs. Colombo, I'm not by nature a superstitious man. Granted, I try to make a living out of a weekly newspaper. But I abandoned most of my capacity for illusion the day I discovered ice cream cones were hollow. The rest I lost during my three years as rewrite man on the Buffalo Evening Times. Join me in a cup of coffee. Oh, thanks. No time. I'm off to pick up Jenny and do my floor. How do you feel about 300 words on the lady who grows prize-winning hollyhocks? I don't believe in hollyhocks. Mr. Alden, I was in the same room as Sister Janice. She told me about my daughter. Baloney. She told me about my husband. It's a trick. She said that Sid Russell was on the edge of death. Did he fall or did she push him? You haven't any right to say a thing like that. Mrs. Colombo. 
May I inquire as to your birth sign? Yes. I'm a Libra. I was sure you'd know that. You know what I am? No, sir. Neither do I, and I don't intend to find out. Good day, Mrs. Colombo. Nice story on the hollyhocks. Good day, Mr. Alden. Something wrong, Mrs. Colombo? I think I just discovered a pale green light shining at the bottom of the sea. Um, Mr. Howard Dan. He left his office before noon. He spent the afternoon at the track. Bet heavily on four races, no payoff. What about Mrs. Canfield? Uh, Mrs. Canfield, two days ago, 2.20 p.m., she met a man in the lobby of the uh, Royal Crest Hotel. He was about 40, blonde, athletic-looking. Uh, they went to room 714. She was home before her husband. Hmm. Thank you, Eve. Am I doing well? Yes. Very well. Oh, uh, one more entry. A woman carrying a suitcase went into the same apartment house where Sid Russell lived. It was about four in the afternoon, the day Sid went to San Diego Clinic. She went into the apartment next to his. She went to his apartment, too. You're doing better than I expected. I'm glad you're pleased. There's only the two of us now. We have to learn to help each other, don't we, Janice? We have to learn to trust each other, too. I feel you trust me already. Good night, dear. He had it decorated. And uh, I'm sure the furniture is available. Oh, we have our own. Uh, I think I'd put our couch right here. And my husband's chair here. It's perfect. We have a very fine class of people, Mrs. Colombo. Lawyers and doctors and executives. And I think we might even have Sister Janice, too. Excuse me? Sister Janice, the psychic. She's thinking about the apartment next door. And uh, then we have uh, 627 and uh, 403. They're all available. You can leave the keys at the desk after you compared. Thank you. Oh, I just love it. <laughs> I'll let you dream for a while.
514 North Beverly, passenger waiting. 29, give your location, what's your status? Magic, this is Wolfman. Excuse me, boss, I just saw a pretty lady. That's a 10-4 Charlie. Jenny, this is for you. First prize. What for? For being a very healthy little girl. Am I going to get a shot? Shot? Yes. Would you like a shot? No, sir. Well, that works out very nicely because you're not going to get a shot this time. Mommy said I had to get a shot. Well, maybe we ought to give the shot to Mommy. Anything but that. <laughs> How'd we do? I got first prize. Oh, magnificent. May I speak to you for a minute? Sure. You, young lady, can look at the magazines. No shot. I can't believe it. Well, what can I do for you, Mrs. Colombo? Tell me about pacemakers. You mean, uh, heart pacemakers? Heart pacemakers. You feeling all right? <laughs> I'm terrific. Your husband? He's always terrific. No, it's a piece I'm writing for our neighborhood newspaper. Oh, well, for uh, pacemaker research, I ought to send you to a cardiologist. However, you're in luck. I just happen to have one. Tell me all about it. You're a very loving person, Mrs. Canfield. But you're being denied love. I can feel that very strongly. No. No. I see a man. A blonde man. He, he's not your husband, but he cares for you deeply. You deserve this love, this man. Embrace his love. Embrace him. Thank you, Sister Janice. Thank you. You're a very fine person, Mrs. Canfield. You know, you really are a very fine person, Mrs. Columbo. I wish we could get to know each other better. Oh, we're going to. Get to know each other, I mean. And Sister Janice, too, I have a very strong feeling. It's almost like a premonition. Mrs. Columbo. How nice to see you again. I just dropped by for a moment, if you have a moment. Of course. Eve, if you don't mind. Excuse me. Would you like some more tea? No, thank you. It's the story I'm doing. I wanted to ask if you have any objection to my uh, mentioning your prophecy about Mr. Russell's death. Oh, not at all. I've already had several calls from the press. As long as you don't refer to it as a prophecy. I think it sounds a little cold, don't you? Oh. I'm going to choose my words very carefully, Sister Janice. For instance, I wouldn't dream of mentioning this notebook and my, uh, car keys. When I came to see you the other day, I remember I was in my car. And I took my notebook out and made a few notes about your house. Then I dropped my keys into the bottom of my bag like this. And then we talked in the library. And I made some more notes, and I put my notebook back into my bag, and we went into the experience room. Do you remember? I remember, Mrs. Colombo. And then you told me all those remarkable things about my life. And when I got back in my car, I took my notebook out to find my keys, and they were hanging on the notebook like this. You see? This way. Your point seems a little vague. My point, Sister Janice, is that someone went through my bag while I was in that room. Are you accusing me of some sort of cheap trickery? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Tricks. Did I tell you what Sergeant Gaffin told me about Sid Russell? No. 
What did Sergeant Kaplan tell you? He'd had two records of arrest for fraud. Something to do with a phony fortune telling. Any convictions, Mrs. Columbo? No. No convictions, Sister Jones. There you see. Common accusations. I receive them all the time. Well, that solves the mystery of my daughter's report card. But it still leaves your prediction about Sid Russell's death, doesn't it? I'm going to tell you a simple fact, Mrs. Colombo. Whatever tricks you think we use, if you choose to call them that, four times in my life, four separate times, I've had the kind of premonition I had about Sid. The first was when I was 11. It was my mother's death. The second was when I was 20. The death of a man I loved with all my heart. And the third was Sid. The fourth was last night. A certainty of doom, of another death connected with this house. Mine, Eve's, perhaps even yours, Mrs. Colombo. We'll just have to wait and see. Won't we? We'll have to see. But thank you for visiting me. What do you think you're doing? I want to help you. I know I can help you. She knows you searched her bag. I sense danger. Gun, Sid left in the sideboard, is gone. Sit down, please. What do you want, Eve? Sister Eve. Say it. Sister Eve. Oh. Jenny, that's the wrong recipe. That one comes out like 10 miles of bad road. Did I do it wrong? No, sweetheart. You did it great. The book did it well. Here. We'll try this one, OK? I don't even know why we keep this goofy book. Penny, how'd you like to visit your Aunt Lucy?
massive antenna. You'll learn how to talk and listen at the same time. Now sit back, head back, eyes closed. You're in command, and that means power. Use your power. What are you nervous about? That calm look, that's what I want. Your hands are interesting. The chair. Don't hold on so tight. Nothing uptight. You want people to believe you. Let it flow. Everything's going to fit. The lights, the music. Now, show me. Close your eyes. Hear the music. Let your body float with the music. It's almost over. Not so bad. We'll let you take a look at yourself. But there's a better part coming. I've been watching them all afternoon, your uh, lessons with Sid Russell, on this machine. But I like this one the best. Mrs. Colombo. Just wait a minute. Good morning, Sid. How are you today? I said good morning. And welcome to your last day on Earth. Do you want to see the rest? No. Does that alarm you, Sid? Where did you find it? I was making fudge with my daughter. And I couldn't get the cookbook back on the shelf. There were too many books. The same way I couldn't get this bookend back here. After you came into the bedroom that day. The day Sid Russell was murdered. Because you took the cassette out of the machine and put it here with the others. And then the bookend wouldn't go back. You see? It wouldn't fit. Are you saying I killed Sid Russell with a television tape? The tape. Time to go on at 10.30. And the explosion. That was the shot the neighbor heard. Well, you can turn the television set off now. Unless you're too frightened to move. Are you frightened, Sid? I found these batteries behind here. And a timer. And the wires going to the television set. My television man thinks there was some kind of charge in there. An explosion to blow out the screen. Timed with your gunshot. To scare Sid to death? Isn't that a little extravagant? My editor checked with some of his newspaper friends. They found a story about how you used to work in a factory, an electronics factory. And then there's this, a citizen's band radio to confuse his pacemaker and stop his heart. You didn't scare him to death, Sister Janice. It only helped. So did this. Another timer, set for 10.30, to turn on the CB. The antenna in the next apartment, behind that wall. The radio waves interfering with Sid's pacemaker, telling it it didn't have to work anymore. His heart failing, out of control because of the CB. The gun, the explosion. And your motive? The tape. Isn't that a little extravagant? Why did you do this? I think because I don't like you. Not at all, Sister Janice. You are a cheat. You frighten people. I can handle Eve. She wants the same things I do. But I don't think I can handle you. Are you going to kill me? It seems I have to. Tell your audience. The truck drivers and the cab drivers and all the good old CB fans, tell them to send their spirits to you. It's been transmitted, you see. Sam, what the hell was that? Somebody gonna kill somebody? 
You hear that? Everybody hear that? Who's Sister Janice? Who's she gonna kill? The handle's Kate Colombo. That's a big 10-4.